What else am I thankful for? I'm thankful because I live in California. Yeah. I am. It's, it's good. To, I, I travel around the country. Trust me, it's good to live here. We're much happier here than most of the country. We really, I know it's hard. But, and I, I'll, I'll give you proof. I was watching this cheese commercial. Remember this cheese commercial for Happy Cows? Remember the California Happy Cows? Our cows are happier. Well, I've been to Vermont, and let me show you what Vermont Happy Cows look pretty much the same, don't they? <laughs> pretty much the same. But I figured out what's different. What's the difference between those Happy Cows and ours? Well, here's the difference right here. Here's the Vermont Happy Cows. That's a family, right? There's the mom, there's the daughter, there's the sister, there's the aunt. They're all hanging out. Here's the California happy family right there. These two, they're actually, they're both married. Those, uh, that, that's a designer DNA calf. That is a perfect calf. Uh, that one's an adopted daughter from Uganda over there. Uh, this one's had collagen on his lips. This one has Botox. And this one has had utter enhancements. That's why it's good to live in California. <laughs> Hey there, and welcome to today's episode of Comedy From Home. This is the comedy show that comes to you from my office right here in my home in Southern California. I am your host, Don McMillan, as always, and thank you for joining us today. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed that opening clip, uh, the difference between uh, California cows and Vermont cows. I hope you enjoyed it, because uh, I can't do that joke anymore. No. You want to know why? Because it's politically incorrect. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, I'm picking on people who've had plastic surgery or have adopted people or uh, gays and lesbians, uh, even if they're cows or the difference between Californians and Vermonters. They can't do that anymore. Can't do, no, it's, this wokeness is incredible. It really is. Today's rant is all about woke jokes because it actually has hit me. And to me, that's incredible because I'm the least controversial comic that I know, okay? I am not Sam Kinison. I'm not George Carlin. I'm, I'm not uh, Andrew Dice Clay. If I had an HBO special, it would be called Don McMillan, Far From The Edge. I'm not controversial, but it's come to me in my corporate shows. People are asking me to take jokes out all the time because of wokeness. It is a problem. We can be politically correct and respectful for others and still make jokes about things. We need to be able to laugh. That is my rant for today. And this is what happened. This is what got me on this kick. I really did this joke a few weeks ago, and the company that I work for asked me to take this joke out. All right? I run jokes by, and they asked me to take this joke out. And here's this. I took this term, API, right here. Boom! That was my slide. API. Application Programming Interface. API. Programmers know what that is. If you're into the web, you know what API is. I said API could mean, boom, Kim Kardashian trying to recite the alphabet. Now, come on. That's a pretty funny joke, okay? That's a, come on. Kim Kardashian. I should be able to pick on her. She's not the brightest person in the world, but no, they had me take that joke out. Why? Because it was saying she was dumb and she's a woman and we don't want to insult women. And well, No, I'm sorry. I don't care if she was a woman or not. She says dumb things, okay? She actually said this. She actually said this. She asked, what is her talent? She says, well, let's see. A bear can juggle and stand on a ball and he's talented, but he's not famous. So I don't understand your question. Okay? She is not the brightest person in the world. We should be able to pick on people who say stupid things. That's what I'm saying, okay? That's what I'm saying. And we have to just be, sometimes our experiences have to be honest, okay? We don't have to always, always, always take everybody's feelings to account. I did a show for IBM, and I love IBM, and they've done lots of shows for IBM. And they had me take this show out, and it was a perfect example of how over-management and, and over-control can really kill comedy. I did a joke. We happened to be in Hawaii where the event was, and I, I did a joke. I had been to Luau the night before, and I said, did anybody try the poi? They try the poi. And I said, you know why they call it poi? Because when you taste it, you go, poi, poi, ugh, poi. It tastes like paste. I'm sorry. It's not good. It's called poi, for God's sake. I thought that was a silly little joke. I tell this joke in the dress rehearsal. All of a sudden, 10 people, they gather around a little pack, and they start talking. I don't know. And after like five minutes, they turn to me, and they go, well, Don, we're going to need you to take that joke out because, well, poi is a revered food in the Hawaiian culture, and we don't want to insult the Hawaiian culture, so please take that joke out. Okay, fine. I took the joke out. Come on. That's getting a little ridiculous. Have you tried poi? Now, maybe there's good recipes for poi, but not this one. Not at a luau. Be very careful when you eat the poi. It tastes like paste. I'm sorry. It does. I'm just being honest. Some people might like poi. It's my opinion, okay? I'm allowed to have my opinion of poi, and it's no insult to the Hawaiian people. I'm sorry. It is. But that's what it's come down to. It's, it's really, it's getting ridiculous, and it didn't used to be this way. I remember when we were kids... Remember, and I'm going to tell a Polish joke because I used to love telling Polish jokes. We told my mom, by the way, Polish, Mary Gavula. That was my mom's name, Gavula. She was and she loved Polish jokes. She told Polish jokes all the time. You can't tell them. It's my favorite Polish joke. I, maybe you give me grief for this, but I'm sorry. You can put anything in there. I've, I've heard the same joke told about Texas Aggies and uh, 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 whatever, rednecks, whatever. The joke goes like this. What do you do if a Polish guy throws a pin at you? Run because he's got a hand grenade in his mouth. Come on, that's funny. That's, come on, that's a funny joke. 
But of course you can't say it today. They would try to have me fix it in the corporate world today. Can you change it? Doesn't have to be Polish. Doesn't have to be. Can you just make it less offensive? Okay. So this is what I would have to come up. This was the joke you'd have to tell today if it was woke, woken. If this joke was woken up. Okay. You have to go. You can't say dumb, right? You can't. So you'd have to say, what do you do if a person who is not familiar with how a hand grenade operates, if that person throws a pin at you? Run because he, she, they have a hand grenade in their mouth. Okay, that's not going to work. You can't woke up jokes. And we need to be able to laugh at each other. We need to be laughing at ourselves. Come on. It's ridiculous. Your mama jokes. Remember your mama jokes? They were great. We can't tell your mama jokes. Okay, you can't even say your mama. You have to say your birthing parent. You have to say your birthing parent jokes. It's just ridiculous. So what I decided to do, we need to pick on woke people just to keep them in line because we have to be able to laugh. So I wrote woke jokes. These are jokes about wokeness and how it's ridiculous, okay? It can get too ridiculous, wokeness. So, for example, quick example, why did the woke chicken cross the road? Why did the woke chicken cross the road? To get to the cage-free farm. You see, that is, it's not that great, but it's a woke joke. I started writing woke jokes. Here's another one. Uh, how do you get a woke person out of a tree? How do you get a woke person? And I took the old standard jokes. How do you get a woke person out of a tree? Uh, tell he, she, they, it's an endangered species, and they'll jump right out. They'll jump right out. That's how you get a woke person out of a tree. Uh, how about this one? I got two more. Uh, three uh, non-gender specific humans walk into a bar. Yes, you'd have to do that. Two non-gender specific humans walk into a bar, and the bartender says, what can we get you three? And uh, one of them says, I'm sorry, we will not be identified as a number. <laughs> That's it. They're not. They can't be. They won't be identified that way. No, I control. It. Okay. And one more. And my whole message here in this rant is, can we please have a sense of humor? It's so important to laugh. Laugh at yourself. I laugh at myself all the time. I'm goofy looking. Look at me. I look like what happened if Howdy Doody and Lurch had a kid, okay? Uh, that's not, it might be insulting, but it's true. I'm sorry. It's just true. It's how I am. Deal with it. Deal with life. So one more joke, and then I have a video coming up for you. Here's my last joke. Here we go. What is the difference between a wake, a wake, and talking to a woke person? What's the difference between a wake and talking to a woke person? When you go to a wake, you're paying respects to a dead person. When you're talking to a woke person, you wish you were dead. Yes, that's what it feels like, woke people. You're criticizing us too much. Come on, let us live. Laugh at yourself. Laugh at each other. It's important to realize our, our, our faults and laugh at them. That's how we heal, okay? That's how we heal. That's my message. Stick around. Keep laughing. That's my message. Enjoy the video. Here it comes. Uh, e-harmony, e-harmony. Why is e-harmony so successful? Well, here's why. You take e-harmony and you remove the internet and you'd be left with a pimp. <laughs> is that not what they're doing? They're hooking people up and taking a percentage. That's the definition of a pimp. And my favorite thing, I couldn't even make this up. When I was typing, typing this into a PowerPoint, I, I typed pimp into clip art and that is the photo that came up. <laughs> That was the funniest thing to be at. I'm all alone in my office laughing out loud. I'm like, that came right I figured just eight years ago, some Microsoft guy going, oh, I'm going to put a pimp hat in. Nobody will ever find it. I found it. I found that hysterical. Uh, Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson, plus tequila, and you'd have uh, Nick Nolte. I, I love that photo of Nick Nolte, man. How the hell, how do you do that with your hair? That is not easy. What do you wash it, gel it, then stick your finger in a light socket? That's classic, man. Uh, Britney Spears. Britney Spears? Britney Spears? Minus uh, three brain cells. Exactly three brain cells, and you'd have uh, broccoli spears. Maybe two. Couple more, uh, Joan Rivers, Joan Rivers, minus uh, makeup, and you'd have a uh, gollop. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know, it's scary, don't look, don't look. 